Hey, this is Peter and welcome to another Take a Break with Valley Cat. So have you ever had it to where you're working with a model and you're trying to put a fillet on and possibly an edge and SolidWorks says, hey, I can't do this or maybe as it's going, it's gonna stop early or maybe it comes together and opens up again. Yeah, weird things like that might happen and why is it doing that? Well, sometimes it's this thing called a degenerate edge and also you might hear what's called a degenerate point or a degenerate surface. Yeah, it sounds kind of negative, but it does happen. When that happens, it does cause some complications with your modeling. And by the way, before we get into the model, I actually provided that to you in the comments down below and also in the description down below. Um, highly encourage you to get on there, download that XT file so you can click along with me and see if it's happening on your system or not. All right, so go get your favorite cup of coffee or tea, and I'll see you in SolidWorks in just a click. Hey there, welcome to SolidWorks. So here's the model that we're gonna be working with, and this is actually the original one that I, that I created for that XT file. And what I simply used here was a loft command and utilize three different planes for it as well. And it's just simply transitioning from an arc down to a rectangle like so. All right, so let's go ahead and open up that XT file together. So to do this, simply so come into my open command and you'll see that I have what's called VC22 Degenerate Edge .xt file. This is a parasolid file. And so you simply click on that and say open. SolidWorks might come and say, hey, pick a template for it. We'll simply say okay to that. So right off the bat, SolidWorks is gonna ask me, do you wish to run import diagnostics on this part? Strongly encourage you, say yes to that. So through that, SolidWorks is coming in and saying, hey, I have one faulty face here. Okay, not a big deal. We'll say attempt to heal all. Awesome, so through that process, it did heal it up and now our geometry is watertight. Okay, so now that we're working through this, you might get a second window that says, do you wanna proceed with feature recognition? At this time, simply say no to that. All right, so I'm gonna do a little other cleanup. I'm gonna set up my scene so it's plain white, and I also wanna make it so that my I have shaded with edges activated as well. Okay, so looking at my model here, I was saying this thing called a degenerate edge, and how do you know if you're working with one of those, and what the heck is that, right? Well, if you notice here, I'm under my Evaluate tab. And from our Evaluate tab, there's this little tool here called Deviation Analysis. Now what this does is it calculates the angle between faces. So clicking on that, you now come in and you specify the edge that you want. So the edges that we're gonna be looking at is actually this one here and this one up on the top side. So from here, just simply click on this inside one and we'll keep it about in that uh, retrospect there of, of how, um, how many points we want. I'll show you what I'm talking about with these points right now. So clicking calculate, SolarX will go through and it will calculate the deviation of this edge from the beginning to the end and or beginning to the end, whichever way you wanna look at it. Now, as we look at this, this edge actually starts with a zero degree deviation on it, meaning there's technically not an edge there which means this is a degenerate edge, by the way. Because as this comes through and transitions, it does actually have deviation up to 90 degrees on it, as we can see from this flag right here. And our average deviation is roughly 36.37 degrees through the transition from beginning to end on there. So whenever I see an edge transition into a zero degree deviation, that's how I know this is a degenerate edge. And this actually causes complications with fillets. Um, also sometimes like with creating G codes and so forth that can cause problems as well. Because technically this is coming from a sharp edge from this point or line to that line That is a sharp edge. But on this backside, Technically, this is just one smooth arc coming all the way over. So how's this transitioning from that point over into this point here? Because technically, and as you can tell, I just having a hard time clicking that point, but anyways, as you see here, that should technically not be an edge. And we'll see that same thing happen here on this outside. So once again, we come into deviation analysis. You can control how many points you want on it. So as I increase this, I'll just do it for this sake. I'll click on this edge here. I'll say calculate. You'll see it's a, 
a ton of arrows on here, right? That is just pretty nice rainbow effect there. And you can actually see I go from zero up to 92 degrees. So actually I'm going greater than that right angle there. Okay, so anyways, that's how you can come in and tell if you have an edge that actually is degenerate or not. And sadly, this one is. So now coming into this, let's say I wanna add a fillet that transitions along this edge here that's technically coming from this sharp corner all the way over to this flat edge over here. Okay, so one other way that we could look at that as well before we implement a fillet is looking at our evaluate tab and this thing called zebra stripes. So zebra stripes is awesome. I, I love looking at this whenever I'm doing part modeling or organic design. And what it does is it allows us to see the transition from one face over to the other. How smooth is this gonna be? So as I look at my model here, you'll notice how it, it looks really good on this side. And as I rotate my model around, those zebra stripes are looking really good. But as I transition further away from my deviation of zero out towards my sharp corner, you'll see that we don't have a smooth transition of our zebra stripes anymore. All of a sudden it's coming nice and then all of a sudden it jets up that way. You also see this on this backside as well. All right, so this is another way of figuring out, hey, how is the transition from one face to another face? Okay, so coming in here, let's implement the fillet command. So when I come in and use features, come up to fillet, which is an applied feature, you notice how you have four different types of fillets you can do here. The one that everyone uses is that first one. This is just simply a round fillet here, and it just grabs an edge or a constant size fillet, I should say. And what this does is simply you grab an edge, SolarX will come in, and it'll let you specify how big of a radius you want. So let's increase this up to let's say two inches all the way around. So as this is coming through, it's actually grabbing a fillet uh, edge here, and it's and it looks like it's working nicely. But watch what happens when I say okay to this. You'll see that SolarX does accept it, but look what happens when I zoom in to here. Notice how there is an artifact here, and I'll simply click on it. You'll see that artifact actually fills all the way across up to here. So technically, this fillet was coming around, and it stops, and it comes to a zero point, then it opened up again until the end of the part. That's really not a good setup there, because that face there, well, let's come in here, let's evaluate it. We'll come in here, and we'll do zebra stripes again you'll notice that it has a little bit of an issue here. It sees some artifacting there and it, oh, there it is right there. So you'll see how it's going nice and all of a sudden you'll see some white showing up underneath it. Yeah, it's actually not a smooth transition anymore. So the normal fillet is not gonna work nicely. And also that normal fillet, that will do the same thing up here as well. So thankfully it is grabbing it, but in reality, as we look at this here, and I, and I have it set up to full preview so I can see this a little bit easier. You'll notice here it comes to zero and then it opens up again. And I'm zooming really in onto this thing too, by the way. So I'll say okay to that. We'll rotate this part around. As I zoom in, you'll see I have another artifact of a surface there. So you might have to come in and say delete face, delete and patch. You know, you might have to do some extra steps there. So this is why SolidWorks has some other filleting approaches here. So watch this. So I'm going to use my rollback bar to go back in time. I like calling it your DeLorean. You get to be Marty McFly and go back to the future, right? All right. So we'll come up here. We'll simply click on fillet again. And instead of doing a normal constant size fillet, we're going to come over to what's called a face fillet. Now with face fillet, what this allows you to do is click on two faces. And then from there, we'll find a, a common edge between it. So for instance, I'll click on this face here and I can simply right click. If I look at my cursor right now on my screen, that will now shift to my next cell. Pretty cool. From there, I'll click on this top face where it's connecting. You know, see here that SolidWorks is showing that two inch because that's what I used last time. It's transitioning nicely and then it stops right here. It's not trying to come in and open up again to create some little artifact surfaces there. And so that's given us a more exact of a proper fillet there, actually. And that same sort of process works on this top side, too. 
So we'll simply come in, we'll say, we'll click that face, right click again, so that way it moves to the next cell, click there. Now we can make this a different size if we want to, make it bigger, smaller if you want, but you'll notice that it's stopping at that same point as where it had that deviation when we did our normal size fillet. Pretty cool, huh? So this is a really nifty tool to be able to come in with that evaluate tab and check out that deviation analysis to see if you have what's called a degenerate edge. Okay, and a degenerate edge is technically coming from where you have a, an angle of deviation to zero deviation. So that point where it becomes zero is actually not a good point. And if, if you wanna learn more about um, aspects of modeling and so forth, we offer classes on that. This is actually an example of our advanced part modeling course. But also we have a surface modeling course that goes into even deeper detail about degenerate faces and how we should model parts so that way we don't have problems like this. Really useful course and it's actually only two days long and we offer that online as well as in person at our office here in Reedley. So anyways, hopefully this helps you out to see if you had a scenario where it's like, hey, I can't fill it this thing or it's not working nicely. Check out those other fillets, such as the face fillet, or there's also the full round fillet. There's some really nifty filleting tools they can work through as well. Awesome. Once again, my name is Peter. Thank you for taking some time to watch us take a break during your coffee break, by the way. If you are enjoying these videos, please click that thumbs up button. Also click subscribe so you can get notified of future Take a Break videos and other videos we are posting here at ValleyCAD. Have a great rest of the day and make sure you learn something new.